All right, guys and girls, this is Bag of Soup coming at you with a little test server review. Uh, the weekend before this, we had a huge weapon rebalance. Lots of different changes with weapons. This weekend, we had a bot rebalance. We're going to talk about that. It was fast and furious, and I mean fast-moving rhinos and furious firearms. So we are dropping into Moon here, and I want you to notice how fast the rhino is moving. Uh, the rhino got the biggest buff this weekend for the test server. It's now moving, instead of 25 uh, kilometers an hour, it's moving at 30, which means it doubles its speed when it goes into charge mode. So instead of going 50 kilometers an hour in charge mode, now it goes 60. This thing is moving faster than a Gepard and as fast as a ROG. So this could be a new beacon runner, especially in beacon rush mode when you're having to deal with uh, a lot of bots and you need a lot of firepower. So we're able to use that speed to rush over to the enemy beacon and of course we are playing the beacon rush mode from the test server so we're trying to capture as many beacons as possible that we can control the beacon bar and we can spawn back in uh, at the enemy base and check this out I'm able to take out a Padden Geckos that was trying to stay back out of range uh, with the Rhino the Rhino not only got the speed boost it turns a little easier and it comes in and out of charge mode even faster when you need to um, unload, uh, unload your weaponry uh, you can see that Fury Zeus around the corner. I'm trying to wait and see if this guy is um, uh, moving or doing anything at all. And uh, while I'm waiting, I see a, 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 a Fujin here that we can start to work on. Of course, we got a guy with us uh, using some of those Furious Firearms we're going to talk about as well. They got a buff uh, in addition. And uh, we, we're going to peek around the corner, see if that uh, Fury Zeus is actually awake. He looks kind of asleep. So let's go into charge mode. Let's charge toward this beacon. Use that big speed we've got now and see if we can get close enough to take this guy out because I don't think he's looking at us too tough here. So once again, the Rhino has not only the speed buff now, but a lot of uh, firepower. And if you noticed, another Rhino just spawned in at this enemy beacon. You've got to watch that in beacon mode. But once again, the other issue is that he was turned around the other way. Uh, in beacon mode, one of the complaints I have is that you're often turning the exact wrong way that you need to turn when you come in. So if you're going to spawn in uh, at a contested beacon, be careful because you could be looking backwards. So I'm using this little area for cover here. We're trying to cap some beacons. We've got a big advantage on the enemy here. Uh, but these matches can turn around in an, in an instant. So watch the beacon bar here. The enemy can only spawn in at their home spawn point and also beacon C. That's the center beacon. And that's the only choices they have. So we're going to continue to use this Rhino to uh, hold back the enemy at their base. We've got some uh, some backup here, some guys that can help us out. We're able to take that Rhino out, and we're going to use that speed if we can get that slower Galahad. Never thought I'd say that, but a slower Galahad compared to this fast-moving Rhino uh, to get back behind cover here and take this uh, Fury out uh, while we can. I think he feels outnumbered, so he may uh, be running for the hills literally here. Uh, the Rhino is still a little tricky to use around cover, so just remember that. Even with the speed boost, it's still a little clunky. Uh, but what the advantage it does have over the Galahad now with this extra speed is it's got the extra firepower. So uh, these guys have retaken uh, spawn point D and E, but that's okay. We've got a couple guys over here, and we were able to take a few of them out uh, with our firepower. And uh, that was just a look at the Rhino this weekend. Definitely worth checking out. Uh, because of the huge speed and the little bit of extra maneuverability and turning. Uh, huge difference. So we can spawn into any beacon we want to. This was the closest beacon to the action. We want to get back uh, to spawn points D and E. And I started using the uh, Fujin Orkins this week because in beacon rush mode you need a lot of firepower. Uh, the Fujin has as much firepower as a Griffin pretty much, but it's got that extra Ansel shield in case we're dealing with extra rockets. Uh, you saw us take out one uh, Lancelot already. I put my shield up here, and uh, hopefully we can try to take out this second uh, Lancelot as well. We've got a, a Rog here that was trying to help us out. Uh, so yeah, we're kind of in a bad spot. Maybe I should have uh, taken a little break and recharged up. But hey, we got to take out uh, two Lancelots there with one Fujin. That's a pretty good deal. Uh, we talked about the fast-moving Rhino, but in addition this weekend, we saw... Uh, the firearms really get that boost. The, the Molots, the Tempest, and the Punishers. So I decided to put some Punishers on this Thunder uh, Lancelot. And man, this thing can hurt the enemy. This thing is furious. Uh, the Thunder not only takes down Ansel Shields at close range, 
but the Punishers just have such a huge clip. Uh, they're not only doing 25% uh, more damage than they were before, uh, but they're also uh, having a shield multiplier against physical shields. They're doing 200% damage to physical shields. So if you're dealing with an Ancelot, you're not only going to be able to bust through that Ancel shield quicker with the Thunder here, but the Punishers have an, a, 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 a damage buff, and they're going to start to penetrate through that physical armor after you take the Ancel down. Uh, you combine that with the long clip, and you can see... Uh, the advantage that these could have over something like the Terrans, for example. The Terrans may be better to take out uh, fast-moving targets and jumping bots because they track better, but the Punishers are now going to have that uh, extra physical shield buff, plus they're going to have the extra long clip. Uh, they may have the 10-second reload, but you're going to be able to unload on the enemy for quite a long time, and that's very helpful if you're dealing with multiple targets. And of course right here I'm dealing with some big boys, uh, which is cool because we're able to take them out. And I found this setup to be pretty effective. You know, the Orkins are going to have the fast splash damage. The Terrans are going to be able to, to track fast in, in jumping bots. But I think the Punishers are going to be able to wear down targets a lot better. And that uh, buff to the physical shields is huge, uh, definitely. We're going to find out in a little bit that that not only applies to the Punishers, but also to the Molots, and that's a big deal because the Molots weren't really doing anything against Ansel Shields. Uh, it was kind of causing me to be wary about using my new Tempest and Molots uh, because I was really ineffective against any Ansel Shields out there. With the new buff this weekend uh, to the Molots and the physical damage against physical shields, it's definitely more of an option, and we will hopefully get to see that next match. Uh, we're still running with the uh, Punishers and Thunders, uh, just keep in mind we're still vulnerable to splash damage but the other uh, benefit to this setup is you can hang back up to 500 meters uh, obviously you'll do more damage and be more accurate close up but unlike the orcans which top out at 300 meters and the uh, terrans which top out at 350 the punishers and the thunder can go all the way back to 500 so you can start hitting your target a lot earlier uh, so anyway that was a quick match but we did some big damage. Uh, we, I think we had a stronger team on our side. We were down a guy, but we had a pretty good team there. But man, I was facing some big boys and that uh, fast rushing Rhino and those furious firearms really uh, took those guys out. Uh, and of course the beacon rush mode is pretty quick uh, in the first place. So this was a fun uh, beacon rush hangar. We got the Carnage Thunders, uh, up close fast damage and it's a fast moving bot with the Ansel Shield. Of course now the fast moving Rhino this guy is once again a beacon capper, and he's got the firepower to prove it. The Fujin or Griffin uh, death button with the Orcans or Pinatas could be interchangeable here, but I like the movability of that Fujin. And of course we had the Thunder Punishers, and also what we didn't get to try out, which was the Lance Tempest Molots. Uh, we're jumping into Springfield here, this is a bigger map, so this is the perfect time to showcase that Lance Tempest and uh, get to see how it does at longer range. You can see all the guys running firearms here. Obviously they were uh, testing them out for the weekend. And I'm gonna say it once again, if you're gonna be a sniper uh, in the back, look at this Butch in front of me. He's got four uh, Tempests on there. He's just super vulnerable to uh, lasers and snipers. He just got nailed right there. I don't have that issue. I've got that frontal shield. I've also got the speed boost that that guy doesn't have. And it's not much of a trade off in firepower. He's got four Tempests, and I've got a Tempest and two Medium Molots. Uh, and considering he can only fire two at a time, and I've only got a 10 second uh, short reload, really it's not a big trade off for firepower here uh, to be able to get that uh, little extra speed with the boost and the frontal shield. So you can see me here as I uh, start to take out this guy from range. Uh, he's going to stick around for a little while and pester us, but we're able to start hitting at him uh, pretty early. And you can see the damage that just one clip of Molots does at almost maximum range. This gun tops out at 800 meters. We're shooting there at 750 to 770. Still took out half his health. Now here's a, a situation where I could have probably stepped back a little bit. Uh, once you get under 500 range, you're going to be vulnerable to splash damage and other types of uh, fire. Also notice I'm taking damage on my Lancelot shield because those guys are hitting me with Molots and they've got that uh, physical damage buff as well. 
Uh, you also saw me get sniped from the left side with that Butch uh, or Fury Trebs over there. Uh, he got a little bit of an angle on me here. So once again, I'm, I'm not in the best position. One of my guns is a little obscured by this um, obstacle I'm using to protect myself. Uh, but once again, you can still see how much damage that the uh, Tempest and Molots can do on this Lance with the uh, the regular buff plus the physical damage shield buff. So we're, we're wounded and we're a little slower, but we're going to come around the side, see if we can get a better angle on these guys, and stay away from that Fury Sniper over there. And uh, this is just a good case to check out the, uh, the firepower. I used this uh, Lance Tempest Molots all weekend. Uh, and really had a lot more success with it than in previous test servers because of those buffs. So uh, I've been excitedly upgrading my uh, Tempest and Molots in the live server all week just to get them that much uh, more ready because the Apple update is going to hit any day now and we're going to get that buff to the Punishers and the Molots. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, you can see us uh, working on this guy. Of course, he's obscured a little bit by... Um, uh, some obstacles over there, but you can see us working on him. And uh, we're watching that, that same Fury Sniper from a distance. We're almost at max distance here, and you can see how easily I'm able to take him out. That's one of the benefits of the uh, Tempest and Molots, is they're good at range, but if somebody tries to get up close on you, they're going to find out how much damage these guys do. They're even more deadly at closer range, because you've got that much more accuracy. Uh, we're able to take some of these guys out. So once again, we are doing the beacon rush mode. And it's a reminder uh, that a lot of times we sit back in a wounded bot on a big map like this. Uh, because we don't want to trade it out and get back into something new. Because we'll have to start back at our home base. But we have to remember, uh, in beacon rush mode, we can spawn back in at any captured beacon. So if my Lance uh, Molot Tempest here gets wounded and I want to come back in, I don't have to start back at, at the the, uh, the valley over there on the right. I can actually start uh, up here on the left in this city because we control it. That's a huge deal. Now you can see me here working on that Ansel shield and uh, how we're able to take that out and even though this guy gets behind cover, we're able to start doing damage into his physical shield, uh, which is really cool uh, and helpful. So that really made a big difference. Of course, we just got nailed, lost our Tempest. Uh, but those media Molots are still doing some pretty good damage. And uh, you can see us taking out some of these guys, uh, even with just the two medium guns. So this is definitely a cool setup. Uh, of all the um, long-range Molots, this is probably the one I would stick with. Uh, it only requires getting one uh, Tempest. And it costs the same as a Fury anyway, and you'd have to buy three Tempests at that point. Or a Butch, you'd have to buy two to four Tempests uh, as well. So this is not a bad uh, setup here. I think at this point it's time to see. We'll try and finish off this Raijin uh, if we can. And uh, we'll see if we need to dump this bot and get into something else. And once again, I can spawn right into the city over there and save a lot of walking time across this big map. Uh, I can point to Beacon B, jump right in. I'm going to get that uh, fast-moving Rhino out. And let's get this guy uh, up into top gear here and see how fast we can get back into the action. Uh, I've heard a lot of positive comments on the Rhino this week uh, with the speed boost. I think Pixonic may keep this. We may end up getting this into the game. Uh, after all, this is a uh, top level workshop bot. So it does cost some, uh, some workshop points to get it. And it still has weaknesses. It's still a little slow to turn. You still have to drop your shield to fire your uh, medium weapons. And um, it's still a slow to maneuver when you're out of charging mode. So even though it's got a big speed boost here, I think it's still got enough weaknesses to keep it balanced. Uh, plus, of course, uh, jumping griffins and guys like that can uh, jump back in and out of danger, and the rhino can't. So I, I think this is a pretty good um, change. I know one of my buddies, Viva La Resistance, he loves the rhino, so he was real excited this weekend. Uh, to check it out. I know Foggy Gaming, another guy, he loved uh, running the uh, Rhino Punishers on this map and having a blast with it. Uh, so this was definitely a welcome change. Uh, I feel bad for this other team we were playing. They were down a couple of guys you could see in the match, but really what we wanted to show off was the Lance uh, Tempest Molots uh, from range there and how we could jump into a nether beacon uh, when our bot is destroyed and get across the map faster 
uh, to get back into the action. So sorry guys on the red team, not your fault, uh, but we were just testing things out anyway. Uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed the look. There was a lot of excitement on the test server this weekend. Uh, pretty much everyone loved the beacon rush mode. Uh, it was still a little glitchy trying to select the beacon you want to land on and get that bot. And then uh, oftentimes you were pointing the wrong direction uh, when you spawned in, which I didn't like. So hopefully they can fix that up. You still couldn't see Ansel shields when you're fighting the enemy. They're working on uh, making sure you can see that Ansel shield bar as well. Uh, but the beacon rush mode, there's a lot of excitement for it. A lot of the, the close-in fighters like it because they can get into the action out of the mid-range snipers a little better. And of course, some of those uh, weapon and bot buffs were really, really cool. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. Love to hear your comments about the test server this weekend in the comment section below. And click like if you enjoyed the video. That's it. This is Bag of Soup. I hope you have a great War Robots day.